Hello, Ibrahim. Good evening. How are you today? Can you hear me? Oh, fine. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And thanks for coming to Alex uh, Media and Empire. We welcome you today. And um, anyway, it's, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's an interview. It's just like a little chit chat between you and me about your, you know, your, your book and yourself. So, you know, let's just be flexible, comfortable, and relaxed about it. Let's just have fun over it anyway. Because if we say interview, some people sometimes get intimidated and they will know what to do or say. So let's say you're just having a chit chat with an older sister. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> so how are you? That's right. That's right. I'm fine. I'm fine. And yourself? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today I have Ibrahim Sawane. And um, as you can see, I'm speaking to him. He's um, all the way in Lagos. Uh, but he's a, a Gambian, so I'll let him introduce himself and tell us a little bit about himself, and then we'll take it from there. Ibrahim, welcome. Tell us, who is Ibrahim? No, I thank you very much, uh, Fatumata, and the viewers uh, of these programs and the allied uh, groups. My name is Ibrahim Sawane. I'm, I'm a Gambian uh, accountant, uh, banker, and I also still take the claim that I'm a farmer uh, from... Uh, <laughs> A village called Saruja, so we are in CRR. Um, basically, I've been in the banking for maybe about 15 years now, um, mm -hmm. starting with Gandhi Trust Bank, Eco Bank. Now I am in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. All right, can you, um, since you, um, this is about writing a book, so obviously we want to go uh, a little bit down the lane to your education and everything. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? where you started and you know what school you've been to and you know how you got to doing accounts and ended up in a bank some people say it's boring but it's money tell us <laughs> yeah that's right um from my primary school I, I always like talking about uh so i did my primary school and uh, junior school in brikamaba that's the as a next uh village to my village um, from Brikamaba, I proceeded to Nusrat in 2000. Uh, I finished Nusrat in 2001. Uh, interestingly, after Nusrat, I wanted to study uh, economics and finance at the University of the Gambia. Unfortunately, uh, as, as you read my book, you will see some of these stories. Unfortunately, I couldn't have scholarships to proceed to the University of the Gambia because my parents could not afford it. 
Then I started, I, I started lecturing in Nusrat High School in 2004. It was from there I, I got a job with my 12 certificate at, uh, at GT Bank. Then I studied CAT, that's Certified Accounting Technician. From mm -hmm. Certified Accounting Technician, I pursued uh, ACCA. From ACCA, I did a bachelor's in accounting, then MBA finance from uh, Edinburgh School of uh, Business is is long and short. It's a very short story, but now there are a lot of roughs, ups and downs. But thank God today, I I can say I appreciate uh, what God has done for me and my family and friends. Oh, so you went abroad to finish your education, right? No, no. Actually, I I, I studied everything. Uh, most of the course I studied them through self study. So, like for example, my ACCA. Wow. Out of out of the fourteen modules, I think I did only two subjects through classroom studies. The 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 rest, I had to buy books on my own, then study it on my own and go for exams. So oh, my sure. and my MP, I did my MP when when I was when whilst I was in Nigeria here, uh, mm -hmm. that one too was through a distant learning. But uh, I I thank God for the, the fact that throughout all these exams, I never had recourse to repeat any single exam paper and, and that's part of the inspiration why I wrote this book. All right and um, what what pushed you into going that far into education? Is it yourself uh, yourself, or is it like family or what? Why were you driven that uh, you have to have this education? I have to be educated. I have to be educated. Why? What is is a Pretty much two things, like you said, one of them is, is, is family. Uh, like I, I indicated, I, I came from a humble background and I want to make things better. And apart from that, I want to help people. If, if I want to serve in the community, I want to support people, I need to build up myself. I need to acquire certain skill sets and, and, and knowledge. So, and that's what I'm doing. For example, when I, when I finished my MBA, one of the first personal project I took was to start a blog about business and finance mm -hmm. to be able to support uh, small business owners in the Gambia, as well as write about uh, personal finance and management, which uh, so far so good. I've received a lot of feedback from young people and even some elderly about uh, managing their finance and their businesses. So pretty much is to be able to add value to, to the society. And that's why I had to pursue that much level in education. Oh, hello, Ibrahim. We just lost you there a little bit. I mean, the, the, the service was really bad. But um, okay. yes. Um, yeah, it's just you? the ending. I think, I mean, I don't know if people, yeah, it's the ending part of it. I mean, we lost you there for a bit because the, the, the yeah. service was really bad. Yeah, I, I was yeah. just saying to, to cut the long story short, I, I, I pursue. Uh, that level of education, uh, basically to be able to add uh, value to the society. And one example mm -hmm. of such project was when I started a blog in 2015, after doing a presentation at the University of the Gambia about personal mm -hmm. finance management. And I started a blog called businessingambia.com to mm -hmm. support small business owners in managing their business and mm -hmm. also personal finance and management, like, like what you guys are doing today is young people have to be encouraged to use technology to add value mm -hmm. to our society and the country, no matter where we are. And that's how I also pursue the era of blogging. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, um, when I put the advert out today, a lot of people um, reach out to me saying that, I mean, um, you work with them at the Echo Bank in Gambia. So it's like you're a very popular guy in Gambia. A lot of people know you in Gambia. And all of a sudden, you just pack those things and, oh yeah, you and go, bam, pack us. You go like, why that now, oh God? Well, I, 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 just, um, I mean, I, 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 I left Echo Bank in 2011, uh, uh, in September. I, I'm actually in my sixth year in, in Nigeria, so uh, some people call me, I'm, I'm partly Nigerian now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think when I was in Echo Bank, that's when I started lecturing, because whilst I was in Gambia, I was lecturing at MDI and Newsroom Management Accountancy Training Center. So that's where I started interacting with a lot of young people in the country. So a lot of people know me from, from, from Echo Bank. And I also did a lot of presentations within the, on behalf of the bank at certain public functions. So, and 
of course, that was where when I started growing up. When I was in GTB, I was much more younger, or I would call it junior, but that's where I also started getting much more senior roles. Then I started, I came to Lagos at least to pursue my career to expose to other parts of the world, and at least the market is different, and the culture will be able to appreciate what happens in other parts of the world as well. And I, I thank God. You're still young anyway, and you look very young. And, you know, for everything you have done, uh, you know, it, it looks like you have done a lot for a young guy. I mean, this is amazing anyway. And um, all of these things that you're saying, you just cut the story short. Um, you want to tell me that all of these things is, is done in Africa. I want to get to a point there. All yes, done nothing, all, these, right? all these things, all these things was done in Africa. Everything uh, mm -hmm. purely Gambia and Nigeria. So, I mean, my 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 belief is sometimes if sometimes if people have a lot of options, it does not help. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you have options, it's good to have options, but sometimes if you have options, it does not help us. I I was mm -hmm. at a point in time where I had no option but to pursue one dream, get focused and discipline about my life for me to be able to change. Mm -hmm or to enjoy the life I want for myself and my kids, and at the same mm -hmm. time feel happy by supporting other people. So I had to get focused, study my course programs, very disciplined about it. And of course, I got married, like this This is my 10th year. I was married, so my wife also was supporting me. So you, you can see that all these things, you, know, you, you when we say, did you get married early or not? But if you have a very supporting wife, like my, my wife, you definitely mm -hmm. will not feel any pain about uh, about the challenges one will go through. Mashallah. Um, you got married at a very um, early age because, um, I mean, uh, we talk about your age today, and now you're telling me you're married for 10 years. Wow. How, I mean, um, your wife, she, she, and I saw her picture, she's very young. How, how did she cope with, with, with you, the job, you know, the kids? Because I saw you, you have beautiful kids. How did she cope with all of this? And now that you're, you're sitting here praising her, saying that, you know, um, she, she, she's been very supportive, but how did she cope with all of this? Being a young woman, you know, no, see, um, see, having see, to settle down. See, 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 marriage, we, we understand each other. Uh, C2 is still pursuing uh, some of our dreams. She's doing uh, a course uh, currently. And she's doing a, a business alongside uh, with that. I mean, the most important thing is about understanding each each other. If if you have some, you don't have to be written down. But if you have someone who would do this, who would do that, uh, we will be able to manage. And all these writings I do. Sometimes I write whilst I'm in my car. I use my apps. We still have time. We go out for movies. We we, we do other things that let us. We still enjoy the life of being being married. We are, we are, we still don't feel bored. We we feel like we are just beginning after after 10 years with, with two lovely kids. Beautiful, mashallah, bravo to you. And um, you're an inspiration, uh, a role model. And um, yeah, um, it, it looks like you, you take on responsibility at a very um, an early age and um, you're very focused. That's what I can say, you're very focused because it takes being focused to be able to do all uh, these things and to achieve what you have achieved today. And um, and going back, I did ask you where the, all of this was done in Africa. You said, yeah. The um, reason why I asked that is, I mean, a lot of people think that they have to get out of Africa to be able to um, 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 uh, achieve their dream. So I want us to talk about um, uh, that a little bit. Like, I mean, you know, what can you say to youth, uh, to kids today, that think that um, for them to be someone, they have to leave Africa? What can you say about that? Yeah, the, the very interesting question. It 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 partly coincides with the introduction I gave to this book. One of the first things I wrote in the book at the introduction, I said, "This is the right time for anybody to achieve his or her goal. It does mm -hmm. not matter where you are. It does not matter your your goals. It does not matter your background. It does not matter your color. The thing is, one has to be focused, disciplined. In life, as you go up and down, there will be ups and downs in life as well." You see, when you, when you enter into a flight, one of the first things the pilot normally say is that put on your seat belt because we may expect any turbulences around the line. That's what life is all about. So as you come into this life, you grow up, put on that seat belt and expect that could be ups and downs. Don't just think if I pack my bags, I go to Europe, I will make it better. Sometimes you are, you are, you are under employing yourself. There are skills you could employ down in the Gambia. During the course of my blogging, I've uh, talked with a lot of young Gambians. I just like I interviewed them about how they do their business. I found out that 
all those who stayed back, they are working in Gambia. They are doing very well. Of course, there are some in Europe and America who are also doing very well. But it does not mean every one of us have to go to Europe or America for us to be able to make it through. That, apart from me, there are lots and lots of Gambians who did very well back in home. So we should remove the mindset that I have to be in Europe or in America for me to be able to change or to introduce the change I want to see. I always use myself as an example to my younger brothers that I, there is no line of thought you can say, okay, this is what he followed, this is the person who supported him or not. Of course, all what my parents did for me is to pay my school fees. After secondary school, from secondary school, that is grade 12 to be precise, up to now, nobody paid a single dime for me. All my coaches, I paid them by myself. And that's why I'm, I also go into teaching people about financial literacy. Because if you are working now, you save some money, you should be able to develop yourself. All my courses, I've paid everything by myself from my savings because I've decided to follow those dreams to be, for me to be able to make more impact in the society. So if we have that mm -hmm. mindset in anybody, you can achieve it no matter where you are. Uh, what is, um, now let's talk about um, the book past. Um, when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, all right, um, this guy needs to help me understand what he means by past, even though it says it's all from six weeks behind, you know, before taking an exam. So I was like, okay, how do I understand this? Because I'm so used to, like, a lot of people are used to seeing a book that it is about love here, so such stories there, this and that. And now this guy comes up, a Gambian guy comes up with a book, you know, preparing you to examination. And I'm thinking, is he crazy? What is he doing? But then again, I said, he's not crazy. <laughs> this guy is really focused and has this book. Maybe I'm the one crazy because I don't have a book in Amazon. We have a book in Amazon. So yeah, let's talk about past. What motivated you? What is the motivation behind past? I mean, what motivated yeah, you? When, all right, thank you. When I finished my ACC in 2009, uh, like, like I mentioned, I was able to pass all the ACC exams on four sittings. They, they are about 14 modules and through self-studies. A lot of young people ask me questions, how were you able to make it? Because even some of people who are going for classes, we are failing. Then on a the first response, I would just give and say, ah, thank God, I just studied very well and the thing went well. But people keep on asking me because one reason, some people go to New Zealand and ask Mr. Kemokai, Mr. Kemokai, will give me as an example. So I keep on getting my people sending me a mail and say, Mr. Kemokai told me this, Mr. Kemokai told me that. Then I wrote a blog about the how to pass it. From that blog, more people comment on one of my blog, that's still the most trended article so far. Then I said to myself, why not I now turn this to a book to be able to help more people? Because I feel like not everybody has access to internet. Why not I write a full book out of this, print it out and send it across the world to help more people? Then I said, I'm going to write a book. I decided that in 2015. And I was procrastinating more or less on writing the book due to my busy schedules. But last year, I then did say, I must finish this book in 2017 as one of my, my goals. And I pushed it until I was able to finish it now and put it across. It is, 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 is very, very, uh, it's composed of so many, so many helpful tips that people can use to be able to, uh, to face personal exams. I, I call it pass because my, the idea is that I don't want to see how to make you pass. I want you to think of one day and say, ah, I've passed. So I want it to be past tense for everybody. It's supposed to be past tense for everybody that have already finished that course I've been thinking of through the help of this book. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, um, now the book is being uh, launched. What's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow it's when it's um... and so for oh. now this this these two days uh, mm -hmm. I've put the books on free on Amazon mm -hmm. that's for all the Amazon uh, platform across the globe Amazon Europe Amazon UK Canada mm -hmm. uh, America my publishing service company have put it for free uh, as a way of uh, helping people who could not afford to to buy it for now so these two days it will be free. On the Kindle version, because for print out version, mm -hmm. you can't afford to make that one free due to the logistics involved. But for the mm -hmm. Kindle version, either if you have a Kindle book reader or uh, mm -hmm. a Kindle apps in your on your phone, you could download the book for free and it will be there uh, permanently. Then mm -hmm. the plan is in 2018, 
I'm going to formally launch it in, in, in Gambia. Um, I, I'm a true uh, nationalist, so I, I don't want to physically launch it anywhere outside Gambia. If this is going to 2020, but I'm going to launch it in Gambia. Uh, my plan mm -hmm. is 2018. Um, I'm actually working on another book, which I want to learn the two together, which is about personal finance. I actually started that one before this, but I said, let me stop. I want to finish this one first, since this was the one that gave me much more inspiration at the beginning. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Amazon, but how, how did you get the book to get into Amazon? Because a lot of, you know, uh, for people's sake and for my sake as well, because uh, um, and, and Africans, we have a way of limiting ourselves. We think that, okay, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. And here is a young, fine man, I mean, getting his book, his book uh, into Amazon. And now that it, this is your first book, right? And you're thinking about writing another book, and another, and another. No. And I mean, you've already um, laid the foundation again into Amazon, which means, this is going higher because I know the second book is going to be in Amazon and the third and the fourth and the fifth. All right. How did you get the book into Amazon? Hello, Ibrahim. I think we lost Ibrahim there. Um, um, sorry. Oh, you're back. Uh, did you get that question? Yeah, about I mean, how, how I was able to get it to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. One of the things I did when I wanted to write this book is how do I get this book published on Amazon? Because Amazon is the biggest uh, publisher, or let me say the biggest store of books around the world. Just like people mm -hmm. search Google to, for information, people also go to Amazon and search about books. Then mm -hmm. I found out uh, various publishing uh, companies around the world. Then, but there's what we also call self-publishing or independent publishing. I, I joined a, a mastermind group. Uh, the mastermind group, they are, they are in the US, but the, the members are across the, across the world. And mm -hmm. we have a platform on Facebook where it's a private Facebook platform. We, we, we join together and exchange ideas. And that was how they, they gave me an idea that you could put the book on Amazon. Then a company, uh, a company based in India uh, called uh, Happy Publishing Services then offer to help to put the book on, on, on Amazon based on some terms and, and conditions. We, because after five, reading the book too, they look at the manuscript, they say it's very good. They offer to do the editing services, the formatting and everything. So today is on Amazon and they are working on the print version of the, of, of the book. Okay. Um, I, I know you're a banker. Um, you know, I, I know you're a banker. Is that... Um, was it helpful being a banker? Was it helpful? Was that what helped you into getting this far about the book, or is it solely you? I mean, you just did your research and saying that, oh, you know what, I wanted to get there, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do how. I still don't uh, can't put my head around it because I mean, um, applicants we are very lazy, especially Ghanaians. We are very really lazy when it comes to um, doing something and getting it, you know, getting up there. We're always limiting ourselves, thinking that, you know what, let me just stay here, because this is where I fit and this is where I belong. So it, it touches me, and it's amazing to see um, uh, people, you know, taking things to another level. Uh, you know, it, it's a motivation anyway. You you have motivated a lot of people. Because now, I'm, I'm thinking outside the box now. When we, mm, I started yeah, reading the yeah. book, and I was like, you know, yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I, I... I would say I got my first motivation by reading other people's book. See, like you said, people have to read. We young people have to read. I, I remember I once read a story, or one of my CEO told us then at the meeting. They they said one author said, if you want to hide something from Africans, put it in the book. And you you won't be surprised because I read other people's book. I read a book like Jack Canfield, Success Principle. After reading that, and I start thinking about my life. I got motivated. I said, I have to do something different. I, I, I should not just sit at the bank, work in here, uh, have my small salary and pack it and enjoy it with my family. Let me think of doing something different for the sake of people. Uh, I didn't yeah. write the book just to be, just to be, to make money out of it. No, I wrote it just to be, help other people to achieve their own dreams through this book. And each and every book I'm going to write, even in the future, that's going to be my, my, my focus. So the reading books helped me my my experience helped me you will see in the book in some areas i i talk clearly about my own experience then mm -hmm. i also research i also research because there are certain things 
I was doing then when I was going to school, I didn't know scientifically they are correct. For example, how you take notes, how you take a summary note. When, when I was going to school, I used to write my notes on paper. I used to bring out a piece of paper, blank, white one, summarize all my notes on it, and that's how I studied. But I just found out during the course of writing this book that scientifically, they said those who write their notes by hands tend to remember the information than those who just type on laptops, for example. So this expression of, let's say, being, uh, how they could being advantage or being disadvantage, because if you're advantage, you can afford laptop, you go to school, you take notes on it. What they are saying scientifically, those who, let's assume they are disadvantaged, they don't have laptops, they write it with their hand, they could easily remember their notes than you who use your laptop to type your notes. So these are things I discovered and I pack all those things inside the, inside, inside the book. Ah, okay. All right. Um, are you going to, uh, like, in terms of books, in, in terms of writing books, are you just going to focus on writing books that educate people or are you going, are you thinking about writing scripts or movies and all that? Because you're a writer. So uh, where is it going? <laughs> Now, for for now, my focus is on the on the the, the non-fiction books. That's on the education area. Uh, things to do with productivity. Things to do with business. Things to do with uh, finance. Uh, not for stories for now. That's not my 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 plan for now. I, I you never know tomorrow. My wife like telling stories. You never know one day I'll just go and interview her and put her stories into a book. But that's, that's for now, my, my own focus is on the non-fiction, education, productivity, business, and finance. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, for the viewers, this is Ibrahim um, Sawane. He is a, um, a blogger, a, a, a writer, and he just um, um, wrote a book called Past. And um, now we're talking about that book. If you guys, if anybody wants to uh, call in to say something to Ibrahim or ask Ibrahim any question, feel free to call me on my messenger and uh, be part of the show today because it's open to everybody. Uh, he's a young uh, Gambian um, a guy. Um, I mean, we are so proud of you, I, I would say. And um, yeah, you're taking the, the Gambians on another level. Okay, um, let's uh, go to uh, Lagos. You're living in Nigeria now, yeah. right? And um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that there is no Gambian living in, in Lagos, but there is always a fear factor. A lot of people say, "Oh, my Nigerian living in Nigeria. I don't want to live in Nigeria. Nigeria, this Nigeria, that, and that." And you are there making it out in Nigeria. What are the challenges that you face, especially as a writer? Is that I know a lot of Nigerian life writers, and they are really, really, really good. And I mean, I'm sure you must have faced a lot of challenges. What are the challenges that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, I'm, I'm enjoying Nigeria because I, I feel like it's from home to home. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm originally, maybe I would say I'm, I'm a Gambian, okay, but I have a tribe. I don't like calling my tribe most of the time. I believe to be Gambian first. Well, a Gambians look like people from the north. Mm -hmm. So if some people see me in Nigeria, they will tell me, are you a Hausa? If I don't want to tell you that, I say, yes, I am a Hausa. So I, I have the advantage because, I mean, with, with, uh, with all due respect to the Western side, if I'm in, in the West, when somebody see me at the first time, they will say it's from Africa. But if I'm in Nigeria, they see me like I'm a Nigerian. I, I try speaking their picking English. So if I want to maneuver my way around, and I found I found the people are very uh, respective and they, they also mm -hmm. help help people. I mean, it's a very interesting place. The, 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 the market is big. I learned a lot in, 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 in this country, honestly speaking, within this past six years. I got exposed to so many things, both in and outside Nigeria, because I am in Nigeria. And I've made a lot of friends from all I mean, part, of the, part of the country, from different tribes, from different categories of people. So it's a very interesting place to live. But if you know where to go, you just have to do your work, so to network, you don't have to go. If you know where to stop, you won't get in trouble in, 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 in Nigeria, particularly in Lagos, because it's a very peaceful place. Okay. The other challenges are very common. Uh, uh, across uh, Africa in developing countries, maybe transport, traffic. Traffic is a big thing, but I'm, I'm used to it now. You can spend uh, two hours in a, in a, in a 15 minutes uh, dry journey. So journey? But that's, okay. that, that's something big, but it's, it's normal for a metropolitan city like, uh, uh, like Lagos. The population of Lagos is bigger than Gambia. Lagos is almost about oh. 10 or 15 million. And we're talking about 2 million in, 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 in Gambia. 
So it's a very nice place. Okay. Um, um, like I um, let's see comments. Some few comments. Um, earlier on, I saw one from. Uh, let's see. From someone when I put the ad back. Ah, oh, that's a very beautiful comment there. Um, say a second. Okay, I said to Jai. You remember I said to Jai? Then I said to Yeah, I, I remember. I remember I said to Jai. We used to work together <laughs> here in, in Echo Bank. She was in corporate banking. I was in finance. Uh, very nice lady. I used to call her sister because she's a very uh, simple lady. Uh, yes, uh, she, 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 she actually wrote, when I put the advert out, she wrote, Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, this is a great news, Musa. You were a, a great, uh, okay. Happy Brahma, some people call you Musa, and there was another name, I think, uh, Suwa. No, it's, I, I know, <laughs> it's, 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 I know she's missing of one of my, my friends. I have a, uh, a very close friend. Uh, yes. We go now. His name is Musa Suwa. We, we are almost of the same uh, age, the same height, so we moved together. Okay. So, so, yeah, so that's why it's missing. We are all accountants as well. So it's a very all right. friend. So, Either of them, whoever you describe that, both of us will see it, we'll take it. Okay, uh, let me read on. Uh, you were a great co worker at Echo Bank Gambia who demonstrated discipline, trust, and respect day in, day out. And the most I admire from him was the uh, resourcefulness and his willingness to teach and empower his um, your colleagues. A true testimony from someone who wants to work with him. So proud of you. Oh, this, this Sua comes up again. And um, yeah, you got uh, a lot of people saying congratulations, congratulations. And um, uh, let's see if we have any questions for you. Turn your time. Oh, some of my crazy friends are there. Uh, Claudia says, uh, good job, young man, for preserving. God bless you. Uh, Lady, well done, bro. Ibrahim, we are all proud of you. Well done, bro. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, Marie Mahoney, who Ibrahim makes me feel old and and, and underachiever. Well done, <laughs> young man. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Aga Jalo. Writers who make enough to fully support themselves are the expectation to be ruled. That's what she said. That's Aga Jalo. Oh, okay. yes, I, I, yes, I wrote that. I said to uh, Valdez said, uh, is, repeating what you said and what I wrote, if you want to hide something from Africans, put it in the book. <laughs> she, she said, I just died. So true. <laughs> that's so true. Because we don't read. Africans don't read. Because that, that's yeah. what, I'm, what, what I want us to talk about, sir. All right. Aida Jalo again said, my 11 years old daughter has always wanted to be an author. Ever since um, she was six, I have been told that she has a talent with words from school, from school teachers, and I encourage her fully. Well done, bro. Um, well done, bro. Okay. Yes. You know, as um, Africans and reading and writing, they're so lazy to um, um, read and write, most of us. And um, even the, um, um, the educated ones, if they are not married to someone very educated as them, and they're married to someone like me, I probably will not read books to my kids and, you know, and things like that. What can you say to people, uh, to, to, to people, uh, in terms of, like, um, educating um, this younger generation as they're the future of tomorrow? Uh, what, what kind of encouraging, encouraging words can you say to them? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, if we, if we look at the, the, the root cause of the problem in terms of people not reading, I, I think mm. one of them relates to our education system because when you are going to school, they, they will teach you to pass your exams and start working. The hardly people mm. teach you to say, uh, pass your exams, get your papers, and, and think about yourself. The first thing you think about after getting, finishing your papers is to say, what kind of job am I going to, am I going to pursue? And mm. in the process, we are not being, let's say, we are not being taught to say, what can I do? What can I do differently apart from having this job? If you go to other countries like uh, uh, Europe, America, 
apart from your your normal curriculum, you are being encouraged to pursue other skills or talents you may have along the line. But at the end of the day, you take in charge of your personal development. Because you are working on, you are looking or focusing on the job, you, you think your development lies in the hand of your employer. Your employer must send you for training courses or your institution or government have to do everything. Sometimes young people, we have to think on that. We have to think that we can do these things on our own. We do not have to wait for government to come in. We do not have to wait for our parents to come in. We should be able to take our developments into our own hand. And one of the way of doing that is by reading. Reading widely, it helps the brain a lot. It helps your mind because it, you, you, you face so many characters. Even if you are doing novels, you are going to meet people of, from different backgrounds. You are going to meet writers from, from with different experience. That's sometimes you tend to give up and they give you hope. So mm -hmm. if young people try to read, whether it's going to be business, development, any course you are in, if you read and gather or learn from the experience of the others, it can take you a long way along to achieve your to, to achieve your dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, uh, in the book, past, um, you said um, twelve uh, proven secrets to pass any professional exam at the first yes. sitting. This is broad. It is so broad. If we want to talk about it, we probably will have to do many, 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 many interviews or many many sitting between you and me yeah oh god i'm speaking i'm speaking your language now i just said sitting oh that's cool that's cool i'm getting there i'm getting there <laughs> all right we'll have to do a lot of it yeah because it's it's broad um uh, but can you um um take us through it through like your journey because you said choice secret can you tell us some yeah. secrets yes yeah yes. okay yeah, basically what i what i did i i developed the the book uh, into three components is like you are you are set to go. I said the first thing is is get ready, and the the get ready is like the preparations you do before the exams and on the mark when we started the exams and in the and the, in the exam hall. Uh, the the first chapter of example talks about the 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 critical issue of mindset. A lot of people goes into exams or taking courses, but they don't have they don't go with the, the proper mindset. If you are going for an exam from day one, you said, I don't think I'm going to pass. You're not going to pass it. That mindset is very, very critical. The, 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 the kind of mindset, the, the kind of uh, belief you have in yourself. If, if you said, I can't pass accounting, you can't pass accounting. The kind of network you get involved in, it affects you. In chapter two, I spoke about investments. Why investments I'm talking about? I'm talking about money and time, but the critical one is time. Most people think you need more money to be, for you to be able to pass exams. Even if they take you to for study classes, the critical one is time. You have to sacrifice your time. Like I gave again, I basically studied on my own. My powerful tool was my time. Everywhere I am, I was with my books. So that time is very important for any student. You have to understand the, the most suitable learning method. Some people can learn by using visual aids. Some people learn by by going for classroom lectures some people can take by just audios so just understand and match every subject or module to the suitable learning method if you don't do that not all subjects are learned in the same way the way you practice english is not the same way you're going to practice mathematics the way you practice accounting is not the same thing you're going to practice maybe medicine you you we've also talked about the 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 issue of the how you take notes Previously, I, I will briefly talk about how you take notes. There are various methods of taking notes, like something called mind map. Mind map is a very powerful visual aid in terms of note preparation. Most people don't know this. These are also the an example is given there how to prepare your own mind map, summary notes, how you how you remember formulas. There are some formulas which are very complex. How do you remember them? For example, if you are doing a complex formula, I recommended that you break the complex formula into components. You don't just attack the formula at one go. If somebody is doing, let's say, uh, let's assume accounting, you are doing a weighted average cost of uh, capital, is a is a bit complex. But if you go to things like uh, statistics or finance, what you call correlations, correlation coefficient, is a big formula. But what do you do? You break it into components that will help you to be able to attack the formula in the pieces. So that strategy also is discussed in the book. I've talked about studying your notes. If you are studying notes, there are some 
key principles that are important to observe. For example, in terms of your location where you study is, is, is very, very important. Uh, there is this uh, scientific phenomenon called context-driven memory. They, they are saying, if you are studying your notes, the environment of learning, that the learning environment should be similar to the exam environment. Sometimes we don't take this into consideration. The issue of focus, are we focused? Sometimes we thought we are focused, but we are not focused. You are, you are studying, you are, you are still browsing uh, your Facebook, you are listening to TV, you are thinking about uh, something else. You are not focused. The strategies, how to be focused, are also discussed in exams. And the, towards the, the latter ending, I, I, I spoke about how to read exam questions. Exam questions, there is a way to read them. If they say define, it's different from when it says list. It's different from when it says explained. So if you don't answer in the right way, you can't get the full mark. Because if the exam question said explain, you just define by giving definition, you are going to lose some marks. People don't realize some of these things. They look simple, but these are critical things where you can lose marks. I spoke about one funny thing which one of my friends laughed at me, Palamin uh, Sane. I said, how to make the examiner happy. There are ways to make the examiner happy. People don't realize that, okay, every exam has a format. Every exam has a format. If you follow the right format, it makes the examiner happy. If you avoid errors, I, I, let's say simple grammar errors, it can change the meaning of your word. I, I gave an example there. I, I said, for example, I said, woman without her man is nothing. Mm -hmm. I say woman without man is nothing. You know, because of where you put the comma, it changed the entire sentence. So as something as simple as comma can make you lose exam mark in a paper like literature. It may not, they may not mark you for that in accounting or, or mathematics exam. But if you're in a literature, where you put your comma, where you put your full stop can make you lose marks because it changed the meaning of a sentence. Here's another mm -hmm. example of, of that. Uh, I gave an example, I said, I wish you were here. And I said, I wish you were her. You know, these two the only difference is E. I wish you were yes. her. If you add E there, I wish you were here, they're different. Imagine yeah. if you travel, you send, you send a message to your wife, you want to say, I wish you are here, and you did not forget the last E. What's going to happen to you? <laughs> okay, that's another that thing. Yes, <laughs> I, 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 I accept, <laughs> yes. You see that because of one E you have missed from your, from, from, from your, your, your writing, you've changed the entire mm -hmm. sentence. These are some of the things one could practice over time, and it, it makes you uh, better. Mm -hmm. Um, in your book, um, I noticed that you, you wrote something that caught my eye. You said, um, listen to positive people. Um, why is that very important? Listen to positive Sorry, people. repeat that again? Yes, in your book, I, I, I read something that caught my eye. It says, um, listen to positive people. Yes, I mean, positive people are very, very important in life, apart from exams. Because mm -hmm. here is the example I use in the book again. I, I mm -hmm. use an example of negative three and positive five that gives you positive two that's mathematical and scientific if you if that what i'm trying to say if you add a negative to a positive it always take it down it does not go up. so if you have your positive mm -hmm. mindset you want to go and pursue a course you have a positive mindset and now a negative person or a negative mindset person is trying to drag you down it does not going to help you it is important because positive people encourage you they said yes you can do it you can achieve it, go for it. Go and study, revise your notes, you'll be able to make it. If you fail one exam, they say, no, you can do it. I had mm -hmm. a friend who has repeated some ACC papers for about two or three times, but because the kind of people he mingles with, today he's successful in terms of his ACC exams, he finished it. Mm -hmm. So if you go with people mm -hmm. that would discourage you, every day you lose energy. Words are very mm -hmm. powerful. So if you go with somebody, you know, they say, if you, imagine you are pursuing a course, your friend is saying, no, this course ah, is no good. This course, you won't pass it. These people, they will not make you pass. I think you should go and do other course. I've seen people who have left, for example, ACCA, for them to go and pursue a uh, first degree in accounting. I say to themselves, it's not a problem, but the thing is, are you sure so you are doing the right thing? Is that what you want? Is this what you want? Some of them, because somebody discouraged them and said, no, leave this particular course and let's go to university and follow this. University education is very important, but that's what you want. So listening to positive people is a way of encouraging you because if a negative 
negative people, they do two things to you. They drag your energy and they make you also start doubting your ability, your skills. Mm -hmm. They start making doubting. Or oh, When I was writing this book, if I talk to somebody, I said, I want to write a book. They said, don't write this book. How can I write a book? You are from Africa or you are from small Gambia. Nobody will listen to you or whatever. I would have been probably discouraged. But yes. I spoke to some of my friends and some of my, my own mentors. I said, I want to write a book based on my experience. They said, yes, you can do it. Try it. Don't don't give up. You can do it. And I finished the book. I sent to them. They said, oh, this is very good. This is very good. So they encouraged me. So I don't know if they had the feedback. Like, you can see what I said to put here on the on the comment on the Facebook wall. It's some of the things that encourage people to do better. And I would want to share with everybody. If you see young people are doing something, let's encourage them. Because it makes them better, mm -hmm. it makes them follow up with their dream. Let us not discourage people. It's, it doesn't help yes. the society. Mm -hmm. True, true. Okay. Um, that, is, that, is, that is true because um, uh, let's say um, I was your friend. You met in Nigeria. And then you, you say to me, oh, I'm writing this book. And um, one day, uh, not, you wouldn't even say one day, uh, I'm writing this book and I'll put it in Amazon. Yes, what you said it is true. I'll probably say to you, I won't even say to you, I'll look at the next friend and say, this guy is crazy, look at him, walking in the street of Lagos, holding his bank, full of papers, telling me that he's, he's writing a book and he's going to put it into Amazon. You see, that's how, you know, how negative we, we can be and, and sometimes. And, and negativity sometimes takes uh, control of our lives. You know, it could take control of our life to the extent that we don't want to see people successful. We don't want to see people um, 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 go places. We don't want to see people, um, positive people around us are the enemies. Let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, reading a few from the book, um, I thought of that. I was like, you know what? Um, it's actually true. Surround yourself with positive people. Because that's the only way you can achieve what, 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 what you want. And now you have explained it well to me. And I read on. I got to a point where you said, um, behind the story, uh, you said, behind the story of every successful student, there is a story of study, practice, and sacrifice. That, again, got to me. And then you say, be ready to pay the price. Yeah. Now, let's go into that. I mean, the yeah. reason why I pick point on these things, because... Um, reading the book, yes, it's a book, and it's very educated. At the same time, it's something when someone reads it, it can create awareness. These are things that we face in society. So I am very, you know, I, I, I like I, I like reading novels. I, there's there are things that I read. I, I, there, like well, when I'm traveling to England, there's certain magazines I have to buy. It. I have to buy the Enquirer. I have to buy Now magazine. I have to, you know, there's certain magazines I have to buy to read. I love reading, right? But in terms of reading a book, like a book, book, like like yours, I will not read it. But this one, yeah. I can see myself reading it because they, are, you know, what the minute I opened, you sent me the book. When I started reading, at first I was like, oh my god, this is too much. Is this guy crazy? I, I, I don't have time to read all of this. And then I read the first page, and then it got me going because you know, reading past, like the front pass to be honest with you i'll be like no i will not read this come on this guy is just gonna bore me with what to do during exams and da, 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 da. But then i read the first page and it got me going yeah. so yeah. going back to what i said uh, let me read it again you said behind the story of every successful student there is a story of um study practice and sacrifice and on the top the headline is be ready to pay the price. Can we go into that now? Yeah. yeah. For for everything you want to do in life, there, there mm -hmm. is a price attached to it. For everything. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do in life, there's a price attached to it. For every achievement you want to make, you have to sacrifice. And if you come back to the case of students, it it reminds me of uh, uh, a young boy, I think he's from Sukuta, who got like uh, nine A's in Nusrat. It was it 2015 or 2016. When I think well, one of these uh, online newspapers interviewed him, they asked him, is the same similar to he said? He said he always studies because you have to sacrifice. As young people, one of the things we face, we have a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. We have Facebook down there. We have uh, 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 Pinterest. Maybe they say we have uh, uh, Instagram. We have programs going around. All these are distracting us. Sometimes you have to sacrifice. 
to say, okay, today I am not going to Facebook, or this week I am going to go Facebook once for you to be able to study. This week I'm not going for a party. Like I said, when throughout this I've been working, throughout all my courses I've been working. Wasn't that I said to myself, today, this Saturday, I'm going back to work and sit and read my books. So you have to sacrifice the time for entertainment sometimes. You have to mm -hmm. sacrifice the time for social uh, socializing or social media sometimes. Because the principle is this. You may not have many opportunities to sit many exams, but your friends, mm -hmm. your families, and socialization will always be there. So the critical thing is be ready to sacrifice. That sacrifice mm -hmm. is the price you are paying for you to be able to earn that certificate or acquire that paper and in the future you'll be able to make use of it to achieve other goals remember mm -hmm. learning is not the ultimate goal for anyone it's not to go and get the paper your aim is to make some change in your life your aim is to reach to something else it's just a means to a goal that's why you go to school we do not go to school just to get papers and pack them no so if you think big you think look at what do you want to achieve why do you want that paper if you want to be a scientist you want to be a scientist probably you see some people are suffering and you want to help the society you said i'm going to be a scientist so you should be motivated by that desire what uh, actually uh, uh, we, we call burning desire for you to be able to sacrifice and pay that price leave other things out sacrifice them for you to move towards that goal so every young person every young person or let me say everybody in generally whatever you want to achieve you have to prepare to pay the price if you are trying to fly from you want to go from gambia yeah. um, um, hello uh we just lost the primer there for a minute and yeah you're back hey primer you're back yeah. yes yes go on yes go on you were yeah. saying yes. So I, I, I guess give an example. I said for for if you want to go to London, you have to pay the price that would move you from Banjul to London. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a CEO, you have to pay the price that will make you a CEO. If you want to write a book, you have to pay the price that's going to make you to write a book. It it took me hours of times to sit down and write each pages of this book. So let's be prepared to pay the price and we will definitely receive the price. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, all right, I was writing something because I, uh, something came into my mind. Um, I wrote it, uh, it, it, it because um, you mentioned social media. Um, nowadays, you know that this, um, the wall is crazy. If the wall is um, uh, dominated and controlled by um, um, social media, that's what, I, that's what I can say now. And yeah. um, it, um, uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, nowadays. It doesn't matter what age. But before, it's like um, the younger generation are the the the, the, the te um, technology freak. But nowadays, everybody knows everybody on social media, and um, we are so hooked into it to the extent it doesn't matter now what age or what gender or who who you are. Um, yeah, yeah. It got to a stage that I mean you. You find yourself you, you find yourself caught up in a situation called mess because we're so focused on social media nowadays. Mm. But in your book, I saw something there, and um, it, 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 it it clicked and it inspired me. In the book, you mentioned self discipline. You mentioned um, self discipline and you mentioned determination, and these two are very powerful. So. Some of us, they're just words. But um, the reason why I said that is especially um, 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 self-discipline. Because it's like people nowadays have no moral. We go on social media. We talk about a lot of stuff. We, 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 we get involved in stuff that we don't even have a clue what it's about. Because we hear people talk about it and we just feel like, okay, let me join the, the, let me join the attack. Let me join the conversation. Let me join the lab. We, we don't have a clue. And along that line, we begin to lose ourselves. And then in your book, I saw self-discipline and determination. Why did you go for those key points, self-discipline and determination? Tell me why. Yeah. Uh, again, that, there was a, uh, a research done in the USA about students' performance, where 
they were trying to test for students who are self-disciplined and their mm -hmm. IQ to see which one of them can predict their performance. And interestingly, the research concluded that students who are more self-disciplined tend to perform better than their fellows who are just intelligent. So self-discipline, I'm trying to emphasize that is very important in life. You, you could go to social media, there's no problem, but if you define, you get focused and say, okay, I will spend one hour in a day, then the other four or five hours I will study my notes. That's a direction of self-discipline. You have to control yourself. It's like you're not disciplining yourself. This is not somebody else doing it for you. You are doing it for, for yourself. You control how you utilize your time, how you utilize mm -hmm. your energy, what you do on social media, what you say out to other people. Because sometimes you have to think about what you say, how it affects other people. I, I am also active on social media. I'm active on Facebook. I'm active on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with people there, but our argument is professional. Either we agree mm -hmm. on one point or we do not disagree. It has, it don't, we don't personalize it. Because I'm a firm believer that, I mean, you, 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 you never know. You have to talk with something that I've to other people. You can argue presenting cases in a more personal way without uh, insulting or without quarreling. So I encourage young people to consider those things. Mm -hmm. But all these things can come from self-discipline. Because if you have between you, no matter what somebody said to you, sometimes you have to control yourself and say, okay, I won't reply. I will leave that topic. I won't even respond at all. You moved on. If you have such values, when you come to education, mm -hmm. that's self-discipline. You see, sometimes for young people, we may think we are cheating our parents, but we are cheating ourselves. If your dad says or your mother says, go inside the room and study your note, you say, okay, he's not around. I'll open my Facebook and chat and chat and chat, or I'll do on WhatsApp and chat until 12 a.m. Before you know, I can't sleep. I mean, I can't read, I'll go to bed and sleep. You think you are cheating of your parents who, who are requested you or command you to go in and read. You are cheating yourself. If you don't develop that discipline, even if you grow up, you won't, be able to follow a more disciplined direction. Self-discipline is everywhere. And it will take me back to the issue of personal finance. There are a lot of people here in Africa who are earning money. And even in Europe too, you would have observed that those who are earning money, but they cannot save because they lack self-discipline. Mm -hmm. Anytime they got money, the next thing they have is the oil to spend it, not the oil to think and save something for the future of their kids in case of emergency to go into investment. So if you lack those self-discipline, it's source of everywhere. It's source of everywhere. So we need, it's something we need to practice. Nobody is perfect, but all of us keep on improving. This is why I tell people that I don't believe in, I mean, the, the general saying that practice makes perfect. Practice only makes you improved. So if you practice self-discipline whilst you are in school, when you grow up, you started working, you started running your own business, you will become more and more disciplined. You become more improved. But if you don't practice it when you are young, when you grow up, you grow up with the same culture. It's the brain. It's what the brain practice as it grows, it maintains to do. Something you do one or two days, it now continues to be a common thing. And before you know, it becomes your, your habit. And everybody should practice self-discipline one way or the other in all our lives uh, activities. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, we're almost running out of time here, but um, uh, there are one or two things that I really want to get into. Uh, uh, the key points that I saw in the book, and I really want you to, you know, to, to, um, to, to explain more, because, I mean, these are words that I will come across, or um, sentences that I will come across and will not take seriously, and maybe I will put meaning that I like to it, but reading your book, uh, part of your book, not, I haven't read everything yet. But reading part of the book, it, it makes me um, I see it in a different angle. All right, and you went on in the book uh, and say that um, know your abilities, right? And um, how does one identify the ability in them? You as okay. a writer, in your own words, how does one yeah. um, do that? I mean, know, know your abilities, it, it has been one of the factors that make a lot of people fear to pursue some of their dreams. You can see somebody who wants to study, uh, let's say, accounting or medicine, but he feel like oh, medicine is difficult. I, I can't do mathematics. You see, mm -hmm. the, the, the truth is self-assessment is, is the starting point of personal development. If you want to be an accountant, you have to sit down and look at and map out 
what can make you to be an accountant? What kind of mm -hmm. qualification? What kind of skill set? And map those things to yourself. If you are not good in calculation subject, there's no mean you cannot be an accountant. It's just practice you are going to uh, improve. So it's having a personal self-development plan, then you'll be able to assess which skills you are missing. Because these are things you can't just do it by just uh, sitting and say, okay, I'm good at that, I'm not good at that. You have to get a plan. Like, like, like mm -hmm. I, I said earlier, since I was young, I planned to be an accountant. So I map out what kind of qualification or studies will take me there. Then that's where, that was why I started with uh, uh, CAT, that is Certified Accounting Technician. People asked me when I was young, they said, why are you starting with CAT? You are very good in accounting because the year I finished in Nusrat, I got the best score in accounting in Nusrat in 2003. Then they say, why can't you just go to ACC Street? I said, no, I'm trying to build my skill. I'm trying to build my skill on the fundamentals of accounting. By the time I move to ACC, it won't be that difficult for me. So sometimes you ignore certain fundamentals. If you want to do math, if you have to go and study grade six notes, go back and study it. But remember, you have to pursue or achieve a certain goal for you to be able to say you have succeeded or for you to be able to reach to the something you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. So talent, skill assessment is very, very important for anyone. If you talk to uh, uh, career groups or career councils, for any job you want to do, for any position you are eyeing for, you have to first of all look at that position, where what can take you there, and where, where are you right now? What do you need to do for you to be able to get to that position? If you do the assessment and move it one step after the order, you will be there one day. Good. And um, last, I said a couple of things. Yeah, last uh, but not least that caught my eye in the book is um, um, uh, burning desire. And um, having a strong, you say having a strong um, desire on, um, on something before you achieve your goals. Um, and which a lot of us don't really have a desire. You just, uh, like, this is why most of us fail in life. We think we fail because um, we have, one way we think we have a desire, we have a desire for this thing, and the next thing we, uh, we move on from that to another. It's like we, we go, several of us, it's like we go here, there, there. We don't stick to one thing. But can you elaborate on that when you said, uh, burn, uh, you know, uh, burn, um, Having a strong body and desire to achieve yeah. your goals. What do you mean All by right. that? I I, 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 read I, the book. I read that part. I know what you meant. Yeah. So, you know, share with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I picked that, uh, that word from Napoleon Hill's books called Things and Grow Rich. He said you have to think mm -hmm. and you grow, then you become rich. He was talking about how people can be successful in life. Uh, mm -hmm. Burning desire is like they say the word burning. So you may have a desire, but it's not burning. Because a burning desire is something that is like, you can say, it's a fire inside in you. That's why he called it burning. It's like a fire inside you. If you don't achieve it, you don't feel comfortable. You want to do it by all means. If you have that burning desire to pursue a, a, a particular course, remember in the book I said, my burning desire was to be able to change the situations in my family. I want to improve my life. I want to get a good job, become an accountant that is going to support the society and which I think I'm on my way to be there uh, at the moment. So I mm -hmm. believe at that time, by all means, I must achieve that ACC qualifications. Nothing can prevent me from going it. As long as I'm alive, I must read, I must pass my exams. When I was writing this book, when I started, I said, I must publish this book. Sometimes in, in, if I'm writing the book during the long time, my wife will come and say, it's time for lunch. I, I said, don't worry, I have one. I just have one paragraph, I want to finish that one. He said, no, I said, okay, don't worry, eat. When you eat, I'll come. So, I mean, because I have a burning desire to say, I must achieve that. So for anything you are doing, if you have a burning desire, you put your mind on it, you should be able to achieve it. But the burning desire is very, very critical because that motivates you. That attracts you to the like-minded people who are on a similar road. Another thing, I mean, which I, I spoke about in the, in the in the book, just to add it on, was the issue of talking to other people. I mean, as you are growing, you have to have mentors. You have to have associates who influence you. Mm -hmm. In my life, I have talked to a lot of people. A lot of people I have talked to. Yeah, across from 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 day one when I'm when I'm when I'm, I'm working when I'm studying. There are some people I don't even know. I meet them on this Facebook. But what happened? I make good use of those people 
like social media, like people like uh, Angud Bakal Toure, uh, people mm -hmm. like Mamed Dylan, Ali Au, all these people who have done accounting before me, I, I, I followed them, I asked them questions. In the book, again, I have interviewed some people, including some Gambians, like uh, Honorable Ajimbo, I've interviewed people like uh, uh, Kelefa Samba, a uh, lot of people across the world have interviewed them to also give me their own tips. So in the book, it's not only my own secret. I've asked people mm -hmm. from different professions. I've asked uh, mm -hmm. one lawyer. I've asked an IT specialist, human resources uh, manager. I've asked people from America, US, I mean, uh, uh, UK. All these things, what I'm trying to show people is that sometimes it's not you alone. You are the only person who has the goal to pursue. But achieving those goals, you need other people along the line. Like, look at me. I wrote this book. I want to reach out to the public. But you are helping me. Through who? Through Njundu. Njundu Baji is one of the guys I, I, I met. Yes. He worked in mm -hmm. I, I He's a very nice guy. I, I met him last year at the, the, the Youth Summit. And since that time, we have been chatting, we communicate. He, when I sent this mail to him, he said, I know somebody who can help you to expose this book. Now the book is here. You are starting with your, with your fan base on your platforms. So for anything you want to achieve, let us not think silo. Let's put people along. Let's bring people along. In, in the same email, somebody also wrote to me, uh, uh, Haruna Drami. Haruna Drami also wrote to me. He sent a mail to Sam Fati. He sent a, a mail to Fatu Kamara for all of them to help me to expose this book. And they all agreed. They said, this is a good platform. We are going to help you to expose it to the, to the, to the wider audience, mm -hmm. which you can't do everything alone. So whatever thing you are pursuing mm -hmm. in life, think along with other people, share, but you are still responsible for everything that happened. But bring other people on and appreciate whatever thing they, 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 they are doing for you. Take their feedbacks, improve on it, and that's how you become a better person. Wow, that's a good summary of it. Um, if, I hear, if I hear you right, I mean, uh, it's very important to have a mentor and um, do a research, be willing to share, yeah. talk to the right people, be determined. It, it, it's like, uh, 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 I mean, listening to you right now, he, um, it, it's like these are the keys to uh, be successful. That's and right. Be yourself. Yes. So, I mean, what can I say? Because I mean, it's, this book is worth reading, and um, uh, like uh, a lot of people would say, you know what that means. Sorry, my, my wife would tell me when I go home. That's, that, that's what it's <laughs> <not. laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Tell your wife. Um, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so I'm so happy to have you here today. I mean, uh, uh, I've learned a lot from you from the very short time that I, uh, that I know you speaking to you and, and you know, um, reading a little bit from the book, uh, I've learned a lot. And um, every day is a learning curve. And, you know, I mean, what I'm doing now, I mean, um, I'm so happy uh, with the, um, the, 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 the lane, the direction I'm taking now, because I meet amazing people, and you're one of them, especially young, amazing people. I mean, I'm learning from them every day. You get inspired every day. You learn every day. And um, um, most, some, of, some of the things that I have done, I have self-taught myself, and I meet with this today. I meet a lot of people that self-taught, because, I mean, um, from the, the beginning, you mentioned that, I mean, all of these things you did. Uh, yourself, I mean, you taught yourself, it's like you did your research, I mean, you, you are a gay uh, go getter, and you know, that's what got you to this um, level today to achieve what you, you are achieving right now. And um, yes, um, um, what I, all I can say to you right now is um, congratulations, oh, we are very proud of you, and we would love to see more, 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 and do lot and show what um, um, what what they are doing um, and um, you know just they need to reach out to all of us and then and, and we see how we can contribute. I mean, contributing to someone's life doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give them money or you 
mean, like you said, like you're here in this platform today, and maybe, and maybe I have contributed to one or two people listening to it, and maybe who knows? Next thing you know, they will go to Amazon and get the book for free. If not, they'll have to pay the price, like you said in the book, uh, pay the price. And um, um, yes, yeah. Uh, going back to the topic, um, yesterday launching yesterday today, the book is for free. But after that, what happens? How much is the price of the book? Yeah, I mean, after that, uh, right now, the, the, the publishing service company, uh, they are working on the, the, the printed version of the, of the book, which will also be on Amazon, uh, possibly in another one or two months' time. And my, my, I'm now trying to assess, uh, I've already started talking to uh, some people in the Gambia in terms of if we could publish it in Gambia, because I want it also to be cheaper that every young person that desire to, they think they are going to get some inspiration from the book, they can get the book, they can buy it. Uh, I, I plan mm -hmm. to take a copy, of course, drop it in some important areas in the country, maybe the National Library mm -hmm. and the University of the Gambia. So what I'm trying to decide whether I should print it in Gambia or I should print it from abroad. So I have to see which one is cheaper so that it does, does not become expensive and possibly do a launch of the book in 2018 in, 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 in the Gambia. I have not picked uh, the month or date yet. I, like, like I said, I want to launch it with another book, which is about personal finance, because I, I, I see people are making money, they're having some earnings, but they're not uh, managing efficiently quite well. Uh, their money is both in and outside the Gambia. So I thought I should also drop something along, along, along that line. So if I could combine the two books together, and, and launch them in Gambia, that also will be, we will be very helpful. So uh, any update, I'm so I'll, I'll, I'll come back here and also have a chat with you again. Yes, definitely. Um, I would love to come, uh, I would love to have you back here. I mean, because I would love to do a follow up and see, I mean, your, um, how far you're going with the book and, you know, who knows, you never know. Maybe I might have a column in the book one day and write some silly stuff in the book. Because you, you I, I recall you saying that you, you take care and care for other people and still, you know, put it on the book. So you never yes. know. Maybe if your wife gave you that translation of what I said earlier on, you never know. You might write it in the book. And uh, because um, at least I, I've got some, I'm taking something with me today from the interview. I, I took a lot from the book, but from this interview, you said something. If you want to find African, uh, look for them in, <laughs> you know, find them in the book. That's true. We don't read. We don't read. That's true. All right. Um, as 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 a young person and and, and a go getter and a very determined and focused person, what is your advice to you so that uh, want to take a your footstep or want to be like you one day or want to go past you one day? What would you advise? What what would you advise them? Yeah, I, I will just uh, advise them, uh, let them understand that uh, uh, you have to take life uh, one step uh, after other. You, you, you cannot just uh, wake up and think that you are going to uh, be successful, either by education, money, or otherwise, or politics, or whatever. It, life is something you build over time. You get, a, you, you, you get a experience. You, you, uh, you have access to networking. You, you have access to mentors. It's not something you do you do one night. So we, we all have to look at that. Even myself, I'm still I still think about those things. We and I encourage you to to network. Look look up to people that you think you want to you want to be like them. You, you want to even pass them, meet them, uh, and and ask them for feedbacks, opinions. These are very 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 important. And most importantly, let's try to uh, uh, focus on our goals because the focus is the critical thing. We have a lot of distractions around our environment that's affecting all of us, whether you are youth or you're an adult, that of distractions. But with focus, determinations, one day we will all be able to achieve and make uh, Gambia and Africa a better place for everybody. Okay, and uh, what is your advice on, uh, what is your advice as a blogger? to young people in terms of um, social media, especially the way it's going right now? I mean, let, let, let's make good use of it because social media, like, like you mentioned earlier, it has a good side and it has a bad side. Some people are making good use of social media. I, I, I would probably classify myself as one of those people because I write my blog articles and publish on social media, interact with a lot of people. And during the course of this writing, I've made a lot of good 
people that I've never known when I was even when I was even in Gambia. I've met people from mm -hmm. all backgrounds. People write to me across the world because today, if you go to uh, Google and probably search small business in Gambia or business opportunities in Gambia, my website mm -hmm. comes first on top. So that mm -hmm. makes me interact with other people. So whatever platform you are in, think about the future. I, I used to give example to uh, some of my colleagues. I said, if you do certain things on social media, whether we know it or not, it's being recorded and it's kept somewhere where mm -hmm. you cannot delete it. It's there permanently for now until they erase it. If somebody Google, let's say tomorrow you, you want to be, uh, let's say a president, you want to be uh, a, a mayor either in Gambia or Europe, they dig out mm -hmm. and they saw whatever picture or comment you made on social media, will you be proud of it? Mm -hmm. I do not like putting a comment on social media, which I will feel I'm not proud of that comment. So whatever thing I put there, I put there with person and I feel like I will never regret making that comment. So if you have that kind of uh, line of thoughts, you will be very careful of what you say, do, or put on social media because they can hurt you in the future or the time you are not expecting it. We've seen across all over the world what's happening in the Western country. The same things will come to Gambia or Africa where you want to have certain public posts. People go and search about you and bring out what you have been doing 10, 20, or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, last but not least, you know, Ibrahim is caught in the middle of being a banker and a writer. So where do we see Ibrahim in the next uh, five, ten years time? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, here in Lagos and I'll, I'll be supporting Africa. I, I have uh, other platforms I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Uh, I'm, I'm into banking, but I'm very passionate about education because of maybe from my experience, I've seen a lot of challenges I had, I had to go through. I do not mm -hmm. think everybody has to go through that. There are, there are certain education systems which I don't, I, I don't believe is helping our society. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to see how best I can work with people back home, uh, maybe University mm -hmm. of the Gambia or any other educational institution where, for example, we can uh, encourage uh, financial literacy and entrepreneurship development in, in, in the country. So in the next uh, four or five years, I want to pursue on particularly financial literacy because it's a major, major problem from my observation. Mm -hmm. So my plan next year is to see possibly work with university for us to assess the level of financial illiteracy among the university students. Then if everything goes well, to see how best we can uh, put a sort of uh, recommend to the government that we need to introduce financial literacy in our education system because mm -hmm. I always tell people that uh, imagine you spend 10 years, 20 years to go to school and you earn your qualification, you go to work, you spend eight, uh, eight hours at the work and whatever they paid you, you just go one night and burn everything out. You, you, do, you don't have anything in the future. That's why people in Africa don't retire. Even if you ask them to retire, they think of crying in order to compare them to the West because those, <laughs> most of those people are applying that. I think it's a foundation problem which we could work on by introducing uh, financial literacy in, 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 uh, in the school system. If we can't do it at the junior level, at least we can start it at the secondary school or University of the Gambia. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that will help. So that's something I want to, I want to pursue with, 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 the, with, the, with the authorities or the schools, uh, whichever institutions in, 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 the, in the Gambia. Whilst uh, I, am, I could be in Gambia back home, I could be in, still in Nigeria, but I'm ready to support uh, young people in the country, whichever ways I, 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 I can. Okay. And um, is there any plans? Are you planning on doing something else in Nigeria? Or apart from no, the banking? No, for, for Nigeria now, not, not apart from the banking, I, I, I'm not planning, but maybe if, if I had opportunity, probably is to think of doing a, a business. Uh, which I'm, I'm trying to see if I can also start a, a business in, in, in the Gambia. I mean, because we have to think about home as well to see what kind of business I can start in the, in the Gambia. I've been talking to some young people uh, behind the scenes to see whether we can put uh, two or three things together and start a small business. But Nigeria for now, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't think of uh, anything to start uh, formally apart from uh, my work here. So for now, what I do here is just go to work, write my blog articles and Maybe there is a, uh, one of the universities, uh, uh, MBA courses here, where I do part-time lecture on corporate governance. Uh, that's like two, two or three times in a year. That's what I do on part-time. Hmm. So, Oga, you chop your money there. 
<laughs> okay, you get chop money a bank. <laughs> they say that your mom usually say, sweet, but my son has to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an accountant. And now you are one of them. Try me too. I'm related to you. Let me tell you. Anyway, uh, it's nice having you here. And now I want to ask you, who's watering the garden at home? Since you said you're a village boy and you love farming, who's 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 watering the farm back in Gambia? No, I'm I'm doing my 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 my, my, my farm. My, I'm doing my farm in the Gambia. I'm, I'm I'm actually participating in the community there. We. Uh, mm. This year, we actually started a foundation for my village. We call mm. it a uh, Sarvija Foundation, and I'm particip- uh, putting part of my time towards that foundation as well to support the young people again and the people uh, in the village. But I, I still do my farming in the in the village. I, I just, I'm not doing the, the 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 traditional farming. I try to do it more of like a hard work. You can call it is it cash crop where I use some of my cars to to farm. The advantage is people may not realize because. Whatever thing I farm, I do not have to buy rice again or for, for my, my parents because my both my momsy and popsy they are all there. So if I farm, I leave the whole output with them and they use it so during that period. So it's it's a good idea if, if you are from the village or if you are not from the village, you go and look for other village and attack uh, attack those people and start farming there. It will save you a lot of money. You don't have to buy imported rice all the time. So village boy have turned into city boy. City man. Yeah, hey. from, from now on. Like wow. <laughs> My, my my friend will say uh 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 <laughs> Alpha Jello, he said uh, from 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 village to Talindin now in Lament. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try my Nigerian language. Kiloshe. Huh? Kiloshe, Kiloshe. Kiloshe, okay, I don't speak Yoruba. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to speak now Yoruba now. <laughs> I think I, I think my, 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 my daughter may try because my, my daughter is lying some of those things in school, so she may be better than, than me. Because I, I am mostly in the office, so my, my colleagues will speak uh, mostly uh, in, 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 in English or pidgin English, English because you know yeah, also they speak a lot of pidgin English here, so it's more common. Yes. But at least when you speak it, I know it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Yoruba, it's like what happened. Okay, so now you are caught up in this, in this Benetian stuff. So who cooks uh, jollof rice better? Nigerians or Gambians? No, that's a big competition in my office here. When when I heard that news, I, I broadcast it to a lot of people in my office because they were they were giving that is the Nigerians. We have Nigerians here. Actually, in my office we have almost about we are from over ten African countries. Uh, so yeah. we have people that are from from Ghana. We have people that are from Senegal. We have people that are from Nigeria. So. Give the question that one. My wife is the best. Hey. You this man. So who, 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 who? It has been confirmed. It has been confirmed that, by your India. wife. Sorry, sorry. The the, the, the line break there. Uh, yeah. You said your wife is what? Now I say my wife is the best cook in the whole world. <laughs> no, I like this man. I'm liking this man. Uh, your wife is the best cook in the whole world. So now that uh, we are even talking about the, the competition uh, between Gambia and Nigeria, jollof rice. So yeah. now you choose your wife to be the winner of the competition anyway. Yeah, no. Your wife my, is Gambia, Abby. Yeah, my wife is a Gambian. My wife is a Gambian. So, so the Gambia win now. Gambia won. No, Gambia, yeah, Gambia, Gambia, Gambia is the winner. Gambia, all the time in my office, everybody, everybody respect that because anytime we are we are doing Tobaski, uh, I do invite my friends, so they will normally come and eat jollof rice there. And I warn them that if if you don't support Gambian jollof rice, you can't come to my house and eat our jollof rice. So everybody have to vote for my my wife. <laughs> so I'm voting for your wife. I mean, thank you very much for um, for for you know. <laughs> for looking after this great man here, this young man here. We really appreciate you there. I mean, I want to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank you in Dubai because without him today, like he said, I wouldn't have, um, you know, been in the same platform with you. Uh, so thank you, Nyun Dubai And I want to say um, thanks to my viewers. Um, uh, I'm Luan, uh, Malik Yoseka, Yang Skabi, um, by Male Sala, Debokulo, Benita, um, Chile and Jato Kamara. Thank you very much. Chile is saying thank you, sir. Asanjalo, you're in the house. Thank you very much. I mean, hi there as well. Abu Bahi and Chibi, Mom say Diamond Fetch. And I want Diamond Fetch. That's the perfect for Umun Kawaii. Marie Kaur, Tino Mujola Koma, you're in Chibi Kirgi, Nore, you're in Chibi Kirgi. Dear Abu Kamara, you're in Abu Kamara. My very good daughter is in the house called Abu Kamara, as you see. You're in Bangladesh, you're in what you're in Chibi Kirgi. I'm in the house, you're in Chibi Kirgi. Team Elite Empire, Chibi Kirgi. 
mumi na tujalo ya tibi kirgis and say jazz ya tibi kirgis ni knowledge ya rena yenye thank you very much um uh, ibrahim it's nice to have you in this platform um, it's a pleasure. Um, it's a pleasure. Uh, yes um last words from you if you want to thank um the viewers your wife or whoever yeah, thank, bring it thank, on thank, you everybody, thank everybody for 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 uh, viewing this program i uh, really appreciate and also thank you to yourself uh for mother coca and the whole crew and at the elite media is is uh, is been very uh, nice and interesting talking to you uh, i would say thank you to everyone in in uh, viewing the program and i want to encourage all the young people uh, let's work very hard and we can make our, our country a better place no it doesn't matter how what the size uh, thank you mm -hmm. once again and stay tuned thank you very much and uh, he said i hope we got a better family and um, a lot of line of coming up because every empire in this part for me um the popolo at morumsa am this program for you know and then um um then the lulan kan mom tam gen your program am am si skin pe dia kan am this program yang anti gas low ni also program is um um am ni imam lamin kasama si dia ke mom tam ni mohammed lamin lay mom tam ni am ni am program of motli am ni wali ke kes ke ini program and the chief mo jadi mo ge ini bosam ge ini ge ini bosam ni absolutan ini kon chief ke ge ini nyasi ni ona ke ke hen so mangre na on the next stage to from um, this week going up elite empire is coming bigger and better and we have a lot of stuff lined up for you guys so stay tuned good night good night and again thank you thank you all right